Hey guys, welcome back to our second and last video on this quick demo. Uh, my name is Devin Adams. I am a Ford instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I work for Dynamic Worldwide, and I record these videos for the people who take my class. So uh, in the last video, we just built this topology real quickly using the free VMs. All right, so we have two Ford gates and our pseudo WAN connection there, or make-believe IP addresses. And we also uh, just used the wizard to essentially build up uh, two VPN connections using the two different WAN connections, all right, between our two Forti gates. And where we left off, let me load up these machines, we were pinging each each location here, all right? So uh, we have not done any failover or any testing quite yet. So that's, that's going to be our second part here. So uh, here, let's go ahead and test the dead peer detection failover and see how long it actually takes for it to, to converge, all right? And then we're going to see how we can set up our link health monitors like we do for our WAN connections without the SD-WAN for our VPN tunnels. And maybe we'll get a better or a cleaner, um, uh, what you call it, failover experience. So uh, the only thing to mention here is that I did do a primary to primary and a secondary to secondary connection. And uh, to make sure that the tunnels don't stay up, uh, each one is set with a different distance. So let's review that just super quick. Okay, let's go over to our, our main site here. And I'm going to log in. And I'm going to go down to my monitor. Now you guys see here that tunnel 1 is up, but tunnel 2 is, is down. And if we go to our routing monitor, we'll see here that the distance 10 is the reason why uh, there's only one connection in here. It's not going to try to build up two of them. So if we go over to our uh, static routes, you will see that our redundant connection, all right, uh, we actually set a distance, bloop, there we go, to 15 instead of 10. And we did it on both sides here. So that way, when tunnel one goes down, uh, you know, uh, this one will pop up and then it won't try to stay up. It'll be forced out once the better distance route comes back on. All right, so uh, let's go ahead though, and before we do this, and uh, I mean testing the failover, let's go to our IPsec tunnels, all right? And let's go ahead and just open one up here. And let's actually take a look at the dead peer detectors, all right? Device creation. Huh. That's brand new. I've never seen that before. I'm still learning all these new little things about uh, what you call it, about the um, about the 623. Let's go ahead and convert it, though. All right. There we go. So if you guys notice here, our dead peer detection is turned on. All right. Now, there is a difference between the idle and the on demand. And it's kind of interesting because I'm looking at older documentation right now, and I'll actually put that in the in the link. And it used to be on idle was the the default. So the on idle will go ahead and send out dead peer detectors across the, the interface. I think it's every 20 seconds. And then if there is three failed packets, it'll go ahead and bring down the tunnel. Uh, on demand is just a more effective way of doing it. So in other words, it only starts setting those dead peer detections once they maybe not receive traffic from the opposite direction or, you know, um, also it stops sending them uh, during during the first act. So in other words, guys, it doesn't it doesn't uh, keep on sending them. So uh, you know what? I'll just leave it on demand. So um, just to see how well it works. So that's the default. All right. Now, if you guys do want to adjust those dead peer detection timers, you can go through the CLI and you can tweak those. All right. Um, at least, you know, uh, you have some flexibility there and there's no additional configuration involved. All right. So, but for the time being, uh, let's go ahead and um, bring down this connection and see how fast it takes to actually kick over the secondary tunnel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hover over just to make sure I got the right connection here. And if you guys notice, it does say port one to port one. So I'm just going to delete it. Yeah, it's it's gone. So, and we should see some dropped packets here. All right. 
Yeah, see how it's just kind of frozen? Okay. And then if I go ahead and I hit the F5 button here and refresh my IPsec tunnels, it still thinks that it's up. Now, you got to remember that IPsec is just, it's, it's one way, both directions. So let's go and see what's happening on, on this side. Yeah, it's it's frozen too. Okay, see how it's stuck at 20, 24. But let's log in real quick and let's take a look at the monitor. So we'll go down to monitor. All right, we'll go to our routing monitor. And as you can see, the tunnel is still up. All right, so those dead peer detectors have not kicked in yet. Yet, okay. Uh, let's go to our IPsec monitor. All right, and as you can see, it still still shows traffic's flowing through it, even though I physically unplugged it. All right, come on, converge, baby. You can do it, baby. I don't know why I'm saying baby so much, baby. There we go. Did you guys see that? What? Tunnel 2 is up. Okay, that took a minute. That took a minute. I mean, not too, too bad, right, guys? Are we flowing again? Okay, we're flowing again. All right, so yeah, about a minute, okay? About a minute, not too, too bad. Right, guys, not too, too bad. Is it flowing? Yeah, it's flowing. So let me hit F5 over here. So guys, about a minute. So if you have the redundant connections and all is right with the world, all right, it should take about a minute for those dead peer detectors to kick on and to make it converge, okay? Let's go ahead and restore the connection and see what happens from there, all right? There we go. So port one to port one. Now, here's the thing. I really don't even think that it will go back up. Oh, actually it did. Oh, snap, look at that. Okay. Both tunnels are up. Because here's the thing. There should only be one at a time. So let's go over to our routing monitor. Yeah, okay. So there we go. Did I lose any packets? Well, I guess this doesn't really show me using Linux. All right. So, but I mean, tunnel one came back up fairly quickly. Okay. So let's go over to our other side. We'll hit a five. So it coming back to life, actually, look at that, both of them up. Blech. So even though both of those tunnels are up, by the way, guys, there is only one route now. And those tunnels might stay up until they stop passing, start passing traffic. So, and that's, and that's fine. Okay. So anyways, um, and that's because, you know, the routing is done through the session table and we'd have to clear the session table. So, um, but anyways, it came back to live pretty quickly so on both sides but um let's go ahead and see if we can't get it to converge a little bit a little bit quicker okay and we do this by setting link monitors just like we did with our um uh wan connections and other videos all right so over here and and by the way you don't have to do these for both connections just the primary all right, because the, the link monitor will go ahead and send ping packets instead of dead peer detectors. And if there is five failovers, and you can tweak those two through the CLI, but if there's five lost ping packets between the VPN tunnel, uh, the two sites, then uh, it will go ahead and remove the route. And it, it sends out a ping packet every half a second. So it should be a little bit faster than a minute, okay? Because that was still pretty long. So let's go ahead and configure it. Are you guys ready? So I'm gonna bust out the CLI here, all right? I'm gonna do a config system link monitor, okay? And then we edit and then we give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this VPN1, okay? And if I do a get here, you can see the different options. So all we really have to do to make this work is a couple of things, all right? For starters, we have to set our source interface as our, our VPN tunnel, all right? To remote two. Okay, I don't know which one is which. Oh, that's so weird. You know what? Let me do this through the, the putty. That command line is just making it too 
too funky. So here we go. Let's start over with our headquarters. Plus, this will be easier for us to see. All right. Okay. So we're going to do a configure system link monitor. If I do a show here, there's really nothing there. So I'm going to say edit VPN1. All right. See how there's nothing there? I'll do a get. And then we're going to set the source interface as to remote one. All right, I'm just going to do it on the primary. OK, we'll leave it to ping. But for our server, it's going to be the other FortiGate's internal IP address through the VPN tunnel. So this interface right here, port 3. So we're going to say 10.200.1.254. All right, and then this is this is probably the most important part. All right, and that is the source IP address because it's expecting traffic from the 10, 10 network, all right? So you don't want it using the WAN interface, which is a public IP address. This will at least use an IP address that will initiate the VPN tunnel, all right? So we're gonna make it look like it's coming from over here, okay? And then if you notice, update static route is enabled. So if this goes down five times, okay, uh, ping packets, it will go ahead and pull it out. All right, and if it recovers, it'll go ahead and put it back in, and you can adjust those if there's any kind of weird flapping or anything like that, but but that's it. Let's go ahead and do it now on the other side of the remote FortiGate, okay? So, here we go. Oh, you know what? I'll use putty, just because it's easier to see. So config system link monitor. All right, we'll do edit VPN one. Now remember, this is on the remote side. Do a get here, a little cheat sheet. We're gonna set the source interface as 2HQ1, set the server as the internal interface on that other side. So we're almost like flipping them around and then set our source IP address to 10.21.254, all right? Now, if you're running any version other than 6.2.0, I can't get it work on, on 6.2.0, but I get it work on any other version of 40 OS, you can actually see your link monitors in the GUI. So if you come down here after you configure it through the CLI, and you come down to your SD-WAN monitor, you can actually see it. As you can see, it is up, it is running, and even if you want to keep a check on your VPN tunnel's health, you can add jitter, latency, and packet loss to the mix. And it's there, I promise. Pretty cool, huh? So our link monitor is working there. And let's go ahead and check it on the other side. Oops, I got two the same. Here we go. Yeah, get out of here. You're worthless. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, SD-WAN monitor. And there is the other side there too. Okay. Now remember, it took almost like a full, a full minute for that to converge. All right, let's see how fast it converges now using the link monitor. Okay, are you guys ready? So I'm going. All right, guys, I usually say I don't do YouTube magic, but I had to do a little YouTube magic. So I don't think the web term boxes were, were working the way I wanted it to. And it was like freezing the ping packets. And I wanted to see how many packets actually dropped when we we're converging. So I went ahead and just dropped a couple of Windows 7 machines and configured them off camera. So um, just because I was getting frustrated. All right, so... But uh, I paused the video right before we, or right after we set up the, the two Forti gates. All right, so once again, let's just go back into the CLI here and take a look at our two monitors before we do our test. That's that whole measure twice, cut once thing. So let's do a config system link monitor. All right, see, that's all we need there. We're essentially saying go out to using just the first VPN tunnel. All right, ping. Uh, the inside interface over here, all right, and look like it's coming from this interface here, and we should have the same on this side here, all right. Config system link monitor, let's do a show, see, it's it's like flipped around. I mean, that's, that's all you have to configure, guys, so uh, let's go ahead and actually actually test it. Like I said, I just did a, a real quick 
Windows 7 instead of the web turn boxes, all right? Uh, just because when we do our pings on, on a Windows machine, it'll, it'll show dropped packets. So here we go, ping uh, 10, 21, 254, and we'll do a T so it does it constantly. So that's one direction, and here it is at the other direction, all right? Now remember, the dead peer detectors took a full minute to converge, okay? There we go, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look now how many packets we lose after we kill that, that port one. All right, so here we go. Bringing down port one now. All right. There's the timeout. Look at that, guys. One packet. One packet. All right. So there you guys go. I mean, that's about as easy as it gets when it comes to setting up the link monitors to do a faster convergence in the dead peer detectors. All right. And then don't forget also, if you go down here to monitor and you go to your SD-WAN monitor, you can actually see if it's up or down. See how it's down right now? Let's see how fast it comes back to life. Okay. All right. There we go. Now it just added the route back up. All right, so it's probably still taking, it's still probably taking the second tunnel, but that's not a bad thing. We just don't want traffic dropping erroneously, erroneously. But you got to admit, guys, that that's a whole heck of a lot better than the dead peer detectors. Okay, so should we do it again? Let's do it again. Let's kill it. What? I mean, yeah, come on, guys. That's about as fast as it gets. Okay? So there you guys go. There is the video comparing the dead peer detectors versus the link health monitors for the VPN. And I hope someone found that helpful out there. So uh, sorry that that was a little bit messy towards the end. But uh, I'll check you guys later. All right. Take care.